Good morning, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Nick Chalon. This is the first episode of uh, In the Nick of Time for a special series we're going to be doing on uh, the weekly news that uh, talk about uh, technology, but also cybersecurity, DevSecOps, innovation. And uh, we're going to be trying to cover what's going on in the news today uh, and the past couple of weeks to catch up and bring you uh, some of the very concerning information we're getting from the hacking group uh, Lapsus uh, that has been targeting a lot of organizations in the last uh, few weeks. So we're going to be uh, sharing with you uh, a few thoughts. Of course, uh, please uh, don't forget to follow us on the in the nick of time TV website so you can get notifications about these uh, uh, publications on YouTube and LinkedIn and um, uh, if you don't know what's uh, really common with these logos, these companies that you see on the screen, I guess uh, you're going to find out today uh, since all of these companies have allegedly uh, been breached by uh, the uh, hacking group Lapsus. And Lapsus has managed uh, to target these companies and go after their source code, and that's pretty concerning what we see um, first with NVIDIA is that uh, the NVIDIA source code, including all the recent uh, GPUs, including the RTX uh, 3090 Ti, uh, and uh, uh, pretty much effectively uh, going after all of the source code of those uh, chips. Um, Lapsus has uh, threatened uh, to leak that source code if NVIDIA does not comply to their requests. Uh, same thing happened with uh, LGE, where the employees and service accounts were breached, uh, breached as well. Microsoft with uh, Bing and Big Macs, uh, Bing Maps and Cortana uh, was also allegedly breached. Uh, more importantly, and more recently as well, uh, you've seen um, Samsung, uh, the Galaxy uh, source code, and that's uh, pretty concerning because. That includes the uh, trusted applet, uh, which is installed on all Samsung device uh, with a trust zone, and also the DRM modules and the key master. Uh, that includes the algorithm for all biometrics uh, to unlock uh, the, the uh, uh, phones um, and uh, everything that communicates directly to the sensor at the lowest level. Uh, according to uh, lapses. Uh, we also see uh, the bootloader uh, source code of all the recent uh, Samsung devices, including the Nox data and the uh, uh, data for authentication. Um, so as you can imagine, uh, uh, that even included the Samsung activation ser server source code uh, for first time setup. Um, so, you know, when you, when you see uh, malicious actors having access to uh, such a throve of, of uh, uh, source code, you can imagine they're going to be uh, finding lots of zero days. So that's very concerning uh, for the weeks to come because we can imagine that they're going to be using this uh, to end up finding much more uh, and go after uh, end users using those devices. Um, what you also see is uh, Okta, which is even more concerning, uh, despite the fact that uh, Okta... Uh, the company has uh, told us that uh, they uh, have not been breached and that uh, uh, pretty much uh, uh, the attempt were not successful. But um, from what we see on the, on the, the, the channel where uh, Lapsus is sharing their breaches, uh, uh, it's very clear that uh, they might have been. Um, of course, that has to be confirmed. But uh, when I when I see some of the screenshots and I see some of the information being shared by the hacking group, it is obviously pretty concerning. Um, so first, it's pretty interesting to see that uh, the hacking group actually mentioned that Okta is FedRAMP. So they clearly understand that uh, uh, FedRAMP is a thing and that uh, that's important and that the government is relying on FedRAMP. So clearly they knew that uh, uh, Okta is being used by government customers. Um, they did mention that uh, they managed allegedly to get into the super uh, user portal with the ability to reset password and MFA of 95% of their clients. Uh, that's pretty concerning. They also uh, told them that, uh, you know, they got into their Slack channel and that uh, uh, storing Amazon keys in Slack is a bad security practice. So that would obviously be a claim that uh, 
Okta is doing that, which is obviously uh, a big no-no. Um, also, uh, it seems Okta was, uh, in replying to uh, to those allegations, uh, kind of uh, imply that uh, uh, they were storing password in plain text because they mentioned that only uh, uh, top uh, Okta uh, administrators have access to user passwords. Um, and then um, what is also pretty in interesting is uh, the hacking group is asking Okta why did they wait so long to uh, to disclose this breach that happened a couple of months ago. Uh, that's also very concerning for for Okta customers. Uh, now, what we also see is that um, Okta was saying that they use um, controls to protect uh, their customers and data using the principles of least privilege. And it seems the hacking group was laughing about that because they felt it wasn't really uh, the case. Um, on top of that, uh, Okta was mentioning that they were compliant and following best practices, including the ISO 27001 and NIST guidance and SOC 2 Type 2. Uh, but uh, it seems that, again, uh, the Lapsus hacking group uh, decided to take a stab at that and, and mention that... Uh, they don't believe that storing Amazon keys um, within Slack comply uh, with any of these uh, standards. So that's uh, that's pretty concerning set of allegation, and and you know it it tells you a little bit about the importance of um, not uh, storing all that information on uh, a, a centralized uh, control plane. I believe that you can use many SaaS solutions when it comes to many things, but when it comes to zero trust, when it comes to identity management, and uh, when it comes to your crown jewels such as uh, Git and your CI CD pipelines, it's probably not a good idea to host this on a multi-tenant environment. Um, you wanna be able to control that environment. You wanna be able to know who has access to what, and you don't wanna be um, effectively getting breached through uh, a third party getting attacked or a bigger customer being targeted and you're just uh, uh, effectively taking uh, taking the hit despite not being the primary target. So uh, keep that in mind. I highly don't uh, recommend uh, organizations to uh, use a multi-tenant control plane when it comes to any of these things. And I think that's going to prove us uh, right for the next uh, few weeks. Uh, so Lapsus obviously uh, being... Uh, now, some of the most successful hacking group in history targeting uh, companies, but also uh, telling uh, employees of some organizations that they would pay them to get access to VPNs or their user accounts. Obviously, that's illegal, so you should not do that. Uh, but know that, uh, unfortunately, they are targeting employees, which is so important uh, to pay attention to insider threat and also mitigate what a single user can do in your system, so you wanna you wanna proactively make sure that uh, for critical decisions and critical changes and access to information, you use the principles of least privilege, but also uh, limit what one person can do or see, and have multiple set of eyes for approvals to mitigate those issues as well. So that would uh, require malicious actors to get access to multiple accounts to get where they want to go. Uh, so that's something to pay attention to. Uh, now. In the next uh, news, uh, we, we see the company uh, T-Tray announcing they uh, launched a new uh, certified East Geo administrator. And uh, that is uh, a, a very important uh, for, for us because we uh, want to make sure uh, we learn and we teach and we uh, learn every day, one hour a day is what I recommend people to do. So if you're not learning every day, you're getting behind, you're getting obsolete, you need to invest in yourself. You need to have your organizations invest in yourself for you as well. But in the meantime, as we mentioned before, the CNCF uh, Kubernetes certifications are really uh, some of the best certifications that exist. So you want to you wanna try uh, to uh, really get uh, certified. Uh, but if you also are in the next level and you want to get to um, the service mesh side of the house, uh, there is uh, nothing uh, better than the uh, certified Easter administrator uh, certification as well. So check it out on academy.ttrade.io as well. Uh, also, uh, in the news, uh, Honest, the company Honest, uh, just announced they acquired 
uh, Chaos Native uh, with a major platform expansion with new modules for security testing, uh, service reliability, and chaos engineering, obviously. They have a feature flag. They uh, do cloud cost management. They also cre created this new whole uh, set of uh, integrations with the security testing orchestration suite, STO, which integrates to many of the uh, static dynamic code analysis tools, container security tools, uh, to help bring a centralized visibility to your cyber posture. And of course, they have a, a whole module on uh, service reliability management, which is pretty exciting as well. So they, they cover the CI, they cover the CD, that's what most people know Harness for, uh, but they bring much more to the table. So that's exciting to see that they are acquiring a new chaos engineering company as well. Uh, in the news as well, uh, my dear friend, Jason Weiss, the uh, first uh, DoD uh, chief software officer just announced that he uh, decided, unfortunately, for the department and for the nation to resign for from his role as the chief software officer. That's a big loss for the department. He, he will be miss, missed. Uh, uh, we now lost uh, the two uh, chief software officer for the DoD after uh, my resignation as well. Uh, that's concerning. I'm not going to lie. I think uh, we're losing a lot of momentum when it comes to software modernization. And, and uh, you know, the, the fact that he's leaving uh, frustrated, he's not leaving because he just wanted to leave. He's leaving because uh, he felt uh, he was not able to get where he wanted to uh, go to. And that's uh, very concerning. The fact that uh, uh, with a new uh, office of the chief uh, digital AI, the CDAO, um, being created, the merging, the joint AI center, the defense dual service, uh, Advana, and the chief data office, and the chief data officer, David Spurk, awesome, also leaving the department. We see a pretty uh, very uh, scary uh, a set of people leaving the department, and quite honestly, I don't see uh, the replacements yet, and that's, uh, that's concerning. Uh, I've yet to hear anything about uh, the the Air Force and Space Force uh, filling my my previous role as a chief software officer. So that's uh, also very disappointing. I left in October, we're in March, uh, soon April. Uh, so that's uh, that's seven months and that's just unacceptable. Uh, that tells you that uh, despite the claims made by uh, Mr. Hunter during his uh, confirmation uh, in front of Congress, uh, who allegedly said that uh, he would care about uh, software and software innovation. Uh, there is clearly no urgency to uh, to get this done as he's not even filling the role. Um, so that's uh, disappointing as well. All right, so the, the Department of Defense also announced that they um, um, just released the JADC2 Joint All Domain Command and Control Implementation Plan uh, thanks to the hard work of... Uh, the joint staff uh, J6 team uh, led by General Kroll uh, and Mr. Whitehead at uh, the joint staff. Awesome work. Uh, unfortunately, the document is classified, so uh, uh, many of, of us won't be able to, to see it. Uh, uh, and, and, you know, the integration is going to be so important. Uh, it's uh, really giving insights as far as who is going to be able to do what to get to that enterprise state into that uh, joint outcome instead of uh, uh, work being done in a vacuum as it is now through uh, DoD services engagements that are barely integrated, if, if anything, just uh, uh, mostly a, a gimmick uh, integration between the services. So that's going to be interesting to pay attention to and see effectively if there's going to be joint funding or designation of executive agent uh, roles to do the work to get this done. Uh, also, wanted to share that uh, I'm going to be a, a speaker at the CISA uh, in Paris, although I won't be in Paris. Unfortunately, I'll be in the United States. But uh, uh, for people that can go or want to join virtually, please check it out. We're going to be talking about uh, cybersecurity in space and also the current state of cyber with what's happening with Viasa in Ukraine and SpaceX. And uh, it's going to be a Viasa chat, so it's going to be very interesting because we're going to be able to have a real dialogue and, and kind of do a deep dive and compare what's going on in Europe from what's going on in, in the US, but also compare the commercial side of new space and the government side. So that's also always interesting. 
um, as well, I'll be uh, excited to uh, to join the uh, F5 symposium where I'm going to be delivering uh, the keynote to talk about the modern cyber posture. We'll talk about the three pillars of cybersecurity, modern cybersecurity, which are the uh, moving target defense. Uh, so cattle versus pet, uh, killing containers every five hours, but having your entire stack as cattle, including your Kubernetes cluster and so on. Uh, we'll talk about uh, zero trust implementation and also about uh, continuous monitoring behavior prevention as well. Uh, so that's going to be really uh, highlighting all the bells and whistles and all the uh, critical components of a successful uh, cyber defense posture. So um, that's going to be fun. And then I wanted to remind everybody that uh, uh, General uh, Al John Olson, uh, the first chief data and AI officer, will be uh, joining us uh, on the show March 29th at 1 p.m. Eastern. And uh, we'll be able to uh, talk about his uh, vision when it comes to uh, data fabric and data centricity, uh, which is also something I'm going to be covering in the uh, keynote uh, on the N F5 uh, symposium to talk about how do we map data centricity and labels and delegate that down to the data owners to map it back to the user and the labeling of those users. So that's going to be a very interesting conversation with uh, uh, General Olson, uh, who is also uh, doing so many things for the department and uh, uh, very excited to have him for an hour. So uh, Phil, make sure you join us next Tuesday at 1 p.m. Uh, with that, wanted to thank you as always for joining us. If you want to uh, also make sure you uh, you get those notifications, please make sure to register again to our emailing uh, at uh, in the nick of time TV. Good to see you as always, and stay informed, stay healthy, and we'll talk to you uh, very soon. Thank you.